buddy. Hi, Biscuit. <laughs> the top three are trade fowlers is what you would call them. Made in, made in England in the 1770s probably. Time frame, maybe 1780s for the top one. They're made to be exported to uh, this country. Um, so that's sort of the, the quality level that our fowler that we're making as a kit will be. These are original examples that are going to be used to, uh, well, they were used to design our, our Fowler kit. But it's going to be flint, not percussion? Yeah, those were converted to percussion. Okay. So originally they were, they were flint lock. So this is largely what our, our, uh, our kit is going to be similar to. Are we going to have any kind of details like that on so, our yes, hardware? So the, the guard will have this um, this finial cast in. Uh, there won't be any engraving on the center of the bow. Very subtle um, engraving. I like, will it have a, a thumb piece? It will. A little different than this one, but it'll have a thumb piece. It'll have some carving. Yeah, this is a pretty gun. And then this right, this gun here, is one that we just bought not long ago. So yeah, this is substantial size. This gun was made in London, probably about about 1700. It was made by John Shaw. It was a smoothbore gun, this eight bore. It was made to, to shoot floating ducks and geese. That's how they shot them during that time period. The general craftsmanship is amazing on it. Guns from the late 17th century, early 18th century, I think are just fantastic. And I love the, the big strong architecture and it's a very underappreciated time period in gun building. See the side plate, all chiseled out of steel, filed, cut, filed, chiseled, socked in walnut, big bulbous ramrod pipe. Details everywhere and the the uh, uh, skill and care in building this you know, is pretty high. It's um, together very nicely. Now is this going to be used for anything or is this just personal interest? Yeah. Or? Who knows, this is just kind of personal interest right now. You just saw it come up and... Yeah, and John Shaw was a uh, gun maker in London from about, maybe from the last quarter of the 17th century, first quarter of the 18th century. He was gun maker to uh, the royalty, uh, gun maker to the kings during that time period as well. So he was highly respected. This isn't an extremely opulent gun, but it, again, it's very, very tasteful and uh, extremely nicely done. Like that yeah, X. So there's a, a big X, and I, I'd assume that it's a Roman numeral. This was part of a, a set, probably 10 guns at least, 10 that are very similar, probably. How's the antique uh, gun market right now from what you're seeing? Yeah, so in, in, th these guns are not really appreciated in in England for, very, for whatever reason um, and in this country they're not really appreciated all that much either so they're um, actually pretty affordable. So there is some some hoops you have to jump through to import guns from England and the lock is very nice too. The lock when you look take it out and look at it, it looks like it was made yesterday. Fantastic condition, works beautifully, very very fine inletting on the lock much finer inletting than you'd ever expect. It's even inlet around the sear spring, I believe. You know, the ins there's wood in the in the bend inside the bend of the sear spring, which is which is something you'd, you'd expect maybe in 1830, not during this time period, which is very very carefully made. So a really neat gun. All of our kits boxed up. Some of them are waiting to go out the door. Some of them are waiting to be sold. Hi Daisy. Come on. Yes. Hi, Daisy. Come here, Missy. You have to ignore my desk here. It's a disaster. But we'll do a little update on the on the Fowler. We've done this before, but we'll show a little bit more. So here was a, a master stock that was made by a combination of CNC machining and handwork. And that uh, is basically our pattern for 
what will we produce each. So we'll have relief carving on it. Not all the details are included in the relief carving on the master, but it'll be when it's finished. Okay, so this is actually kind of hard to see, but this is a model of the stock. So this is a three-dimensional representation of what the stock will be with all the inlets and everything modeled in. Every little pinhole and everything. So this is the first step in doing a recreation. You have to have a model of the part. Yeah, so it takes a lot of work, you know, the, to to create a model that's as complex as this. So it takes it takes a good bit of time. Let me turn off a few things here. It has everything in it, even the oh, like ramrod pipe inlets, underlugs, pinholes, every little detail. So this is the model step, but has, have there been any tool paths made yet Yeah, from so that? the first step you have to do, you have to create a model, and from that model, use that model in software to tell the machines how to move and how to recreate this. We can go over here and start looking at some of the tool paths. I can show you a little bit about what, what happens here. So a few tool paths you can see there, it's just cutting the, the top profile of the stock and there it's cutting the kind of the outside profile. We can do a little simulation of this. You can kind of see it. You can see the that's actually the cutter moving there. That's a, one one of the first steps. So we can run through a simulation of the whole part here. This will take a minute for it to simulate the whole part, but we'll see we'll have a representation of what it'll look like. So there's a lot of a lot of tool pathing here. We'll be able to see kind of progress. Have you run any um, in real life yet? Have no, you? no. So we'll probably early next week we'll be able to run a sample stock. And from there, it will take um, adjustment and iterations to make it, it correct. It will take a little bit of time. It may take, I mean, it's complex part. A lot of parts have to fit. Some of those parts are castings and there's adjustments that have to be made. So it may take, you know, it may take 10 stocks in order to get it all refined and worked out. What's still left for you to do to, to be able to run the sample? Um, so uh, relief carving can be pretty difficult in well, I wouldn't say necessarily difficult, but it, it, it's, it's more of a challenge in programming this relief carving on, on the machine, so um, I need to do some more work on it. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. Let's see the other side here, yeah, so over here is where it was working, so it's... So the tool that's used to surface the stock, you can see doesn't really get in and make refined carving. Interesting. Bigger radius and so forth. So we have to come in with finer tools to refine this, and then you know, tools to make the edges nice and crisp. So there's, there's a, it's a little bit more tedious and time-consuming to to get this relief carving done well. Let's see the lock inlet. Each color represents a tool, a tool path. If you had to estimate how many hours um, of of you sitting here at the computer? A lot of time, I don't know, you know, weeks. So anyway, you can kind of see the, uh, how it'll look, you know. And th this isn't a very refined, the, the this is what's called a simulation, and it's not real refined. Um, it exaggerates things, um, but you get an idea, and it's a prediction on what, the, what it's gonna look like in the machine. So here are the, some, some trials, little tool paths that I'm working on to refine the carving. So it's gonna come back through with these different tools to mm -hmm. to sharpen up and make the carving crisper. So, yeah. That's beautiful. So yeah, so it's coming along well. It won't be too long before we're running a, a sample of it. Um, we have also been working on barrels for Fowler. So it's been a little bit of a challenge because these are thin walled barrels, about 70 thousandths and 16 gauge, which is a pretty thin wall. Um, so it can be difficult to turn. And these are round barrels, three stage barrels. So a round section, another round section, and then it'll transition into an octagon section. The octagon will come clear to here, but this taper is just to break the flats of the, the octagon. So this has yet to be machined octagon. 
Um, but anyway, it, it uh, turned out well, a lightweight barrel, very nice surface finish, so we had to modify some of our machines to be able to make these uh, well. Turning a thin walled part this long is not easy, it can be pretty, pretty tricky, but that was something we had to work out. You know, we have to make underlugs for this, and the, the underlugs are going to be uh, slightly attached and soldered on. We have to, we'll provide those that are soldered on, so we have to make fixtures to locate under lugs and attach them, solder them on. Um, we have some other parts to program, like a trigger plate, and side plate, and we're making, probably making sheet, formed sheet ramrod pipes. They're made out of thin sheet metal and formed and rolled. So we'll probably, probably make them out of sheet, although we could machine these, and they, even making the wall very, very thin, we could probably machine them. We may machine them, but we'll probably roll them. About 20 or 25,000, probably 20,000 thick sheet. And that's just typical of, of how they were made on these particular guns. Mm -hmm. Here's a side plate, what it's gonna be shaped like. The trigger guard casting here. Kind of, we talked about this a little bit, so you can see the, the the cast in detail. This is an investment casting, but a, a very nice investment casting. Nice looking guard there. The butt plate. You see. And we do some things with the three D printing. This is a kind of a little section of the butt stock, and we three just quickly three D printed. A, out of plastic, a sample to check our our design and programming for our inlets to make sure the butt plate will at least come close to fitting before we start machining a stock. It's a quick quick way to to make a prototype to see if we're on the right track. So that's sort of an update on the on Fowler. I can't really give a I mean, firm date other than that we're making progress, it takes time. And, you know, the good news is it's going to be a very nice, uh, you know, a very nice gun, It'll be very traditional. Uh, we've been working on it, uh, you know, we have various amounts of time to work on it, and lately I've been able to spend a little bit of time on it. Um, you know, production always comes first, and, you know, so far this year, uh, you know, we've had the best start to any year that we've had. Business has been very good, so in order to keep everybody happy, we have to make sure that we, uh, you know, we, we get our, our current orders and our current products out the door, so that takes quite a bit of time. But thank you for everybody that's been purchasing. We really appreciate it. It allows yeah. us to move forward and buy better equipment, and make better parts, and so forth. And it just allows everything to keep progressing. And that's what we've been doing since uh, since we started. We have, you know, we didn't start out with uh, you know, expensive equipment and high quality equipment, but you know, the business has been a success and allowed for that. Okay. Bye. <laughs>